Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. It's in the descriptions below. The purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any Watchbox platform. Reach out to me directly, email tmasso at thewatchbox.com for pricing. Today, we're discussing a model launched at Basel World 2011, 40.8 millimeters in rose gold. This is the Patek Philippe Aquanaut Travel Time 5164R001. A sports watch sibling to the Nautilus, this model was considered to be the Aquanaut that finally took the Aquanaut line out of the shadow of the Nautilus with a practical and exclusive complication for which the Nautilus at the time had no direct equivalent. Now the watch is 40.8 millimeters in diameter by 10.4 millimeters thick. We'll get a little bit closer and take a look lug to lug. It measures 47.4 five millimeters with a 21 millimeter spacing between the lugs. Throw the watch on my wrist which is 16 centimeters in circumference and you can see it's nicely sized. It wears a little bit bigger than its bare lug to lug dimensions as the strap has some stiffness to it and flares out at the edge of the wrist. Nevertheless you should be able to wear this watch on the strap on a wrist as small as 14 centimeters in circumference. You can see down the barrel the lugs come nowhere near the edge of my wrist. It's low enough to fit underneath the cuff and I'll show you what I mean about the strap having a little bit of flare and fight. You see how I can't pull it straight down? So it does wear a little bit larger. Despite being relatively narrow lug to lug, think of this more as a 42 millimeter watch in terms of how it wears. The strap is an interesting piece. Ever since the first Aquanaut in 1997, this composite strap has been part of the look. There have been bracelets on Aquanauts, but they never look right. The strap is native to the design, always has been and still is. And this one is a dark brown. They call it composite. It is basically rubber. It has a geosphere cut just like the dial, so there's an echo of the dial design. And then you can see on the underside there are some hollows that thin it out and then some serrations that allow it to be cut to length. It is a strap that gets cut to length. This is an uncut strap. You will have the honor of sizing it up or we can size it for you. We have a clasp that's actually better than what you'll find on the Nautilus. Truth in advertising, it's a pre-owned watch. Some of that's my fingerprints. Some of that is just prior wear. So I want to show that in all of its glory. The clasp is better than the one on the Nautilus as it's a twin trigger release rather than the somewhat spindly and thin clamshell on the stamped clasp used by the Nautilus. This is actually a better and more substantial system. The case is handsome, though not as intricate in design as the Nautilus, but what you see is hand finished. The combination of the bevels, the polishing, the satination, and the contrast, all of this is done manually, and the watch is handsomely symmetrical as we have these pusher adjusters for the travel time complication, which provide a nice visual counterweight to the crown guards over at 3 o'clock. Now, it is a screw-down crown. The watch is 120 meters water-resistant, and it is inspired by the Nautilus. It has that rounded polygon for the bezel, rounded and polished on its side. It also has a narrow vertical section all the way on its edge, and then there's a vertical set and finish across the top. The dial is best described as a sort of brown-bronze fade. It's lighter at the center. It's a metallic fade, and darker at the edge. We have rose-gold hands, and rose gold applique Arabic numerals. We have that geosphere cut for the dial, and then we have a smaller one inside the radial date indicator at 6 o'clock. Now, because we have this travel time complication, we can actually hide that second time zone when we don't need it to clean up the dial. You have a day-night indicator for both local and reference times, and that's not universal on travel time watches. You could see that we have the ability, if we wish, to make all of these changes without affecting the other indications, and you can also see that I can adjust the date forward or backwards using the travel time toggle. Now the timepiece does include a screw down crown for durability and while the watch doesn't formally have a hacking seconds function, by applying a little bit of back pressure to these caliber 324 movements, you can effectively stop the seconds hand wherever you like to set them precisely against a reference time. Flipping the watch over, we have caliber 324 SCFUS. All of that just means it is a center second with a calendar and a travel time. Unidirectional automatic winding it uses ceramic rotor bearings for greater durability, reduced maintenance requirements, and higher efficiency. 28 8 beat rate, that's 8 beats per second. 45 hour power reserve. We have a free sprung balance, which is Patek's Gyromax design, and that helps to allow precise setting in six positions, as well as retention of timing settings after bumps or concussions. The hairspring is a Spiromax silicon that Patek Philippe uses to make the watch anti-magnetic, and of course all of this immaculately hand-finished bearing the Patek Philippe seal, which is a mark not just of beauty, but also attesting to the accuracy of the watch at no worse than minus three plus two seconds per day. So they make an accurate 
see attestation, very rare in high horology, all of this pivoting on 29 joules and with dual time functionality. It is visually impressive, technically impressive, and versatile. This is a great cont testant to be your one and only watch and it's very rare that I say this could be your one watch for the rest of your life but when it's a rose gold Patek Philippe 5164 dress watch sports watch home watch travel watch it's all of those things and more reach out to tmasso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details